When we opened the store in 1979, we were trying to figure out ways of opening the pages of books to children rather than just only the classic here. Would you like to read this? And Carol and Steve Schweppe came up with a wonderful idea. And what they did was they put away in this case called the Hickleby Hall of Fame items that made children just curious enough to want to know that the, about the books that they were about. For example, here you can find the acorn that landed on Chicken Little's head. You can find the tooth pulled by Dr. DeSoto. And there's quite a few things, <laughs> there are quite a few things and around the entire store. Over the years, authors got involved. And when they did, they started giving us their own input. For example, here from David Wisniewski, we have all of the razor blades that he used to cut the careful illustrations that he used in his book, The Secret Knowledge of Grown-Ups. Um, here we have Rosemary Wells' original Noisy Nora. Um, up here, when Jeff Moss uh, did his poetry book called The Butterfly Jar, he uh, created a poem that I thought was great fun, and it was called Jelly Beans Up Your Nose. So here he ha we have the original uh, notes that he took on that poem. Uh, here you'll find an original illustration of Clifford. And here we have a manuscript for Happy Birthday, uh, Ronald Morgan. Uh, this was sent to us by Patricia Riley Gift. And it really works for us because we can open this up, take out the manuscript, and show children what a manuscript looks like while uh, it's got all the editor's notes on it. Here, here we have a wonderful spray of wheat that Ruth Heller used. She actually used this one to draw the illustration in her book, The Reason for a Flower. Uh, here, we've had this since the book was first published, The Ghost Eye Tree. This is the dummy that was given to us by Ted Rand. And this sits right here and it has for 20 something years for children to look at if they want to know what a book dummy looks like. And here, Gordon Corman, who now, by the way, I've seen him recently, who is the father of older children, um, when he was 13, he published a book called This Can't Be Happening at McDonald Hall. And here is a letter to us from Gordon Corman after he visited Hickleby's. Here is the letter from Scholastic accepting his book. And in his town in Canada, here is the newspaper clipping of him being congratulated by the um, people of his town. Now, if you look next to that, there's Puss in Boots with a feather sticking out of the top. And the feather is the actual feather that Fred Marcelino used to illustrate the Caldecott award-winning book, uh, Puss in Boots. That would be good. The self this is great fun. Lynn Reed Banks, who wrote The Indian in the Cupboard, this is actually a carbon copy from a typewriter of the letter that she sent to the military to make sure that she wasn't making any, any uh, errors in her military references in that book. Look at this. <laughs> There's nothing um, like opening up your mail and receiving a large bone the wet dog saliva proves was was real um, from Stephen Kellogg and he sent us Pinkerton's bone which we've had a lot of fun with uh, we've got this we've got these wonderful artifacts um, all over the store up and down and in, in every area you can imagine if you if you look over here you'll see a Merlin and this is from T.A. Barron and one day we received in the mail this wonderful doll of a wizard and he said this has been sitting above my desk where I write for years and she, he said the last few years every time I look at it I think I need to send this to Hickleby's and so he did that. Uh, this linoleum cup was given to us um, by uh, Ashley Wolf and it's the one that she used in her illustrations for Goody O'Grady uh, and it's, a, it's great because p kids can look at it very closely and see the actual working of the lines that she made in order to get the illustrations. Also from Rosemary Wells, this is Ruby's dress from her Max and Ruby illustrations and an original ornament from Max. This is what one might find if they were to go visit uh, Winnie the Pooh. You know, the Mr. Sanders 
sign, the bell, and of course the ring also. And it's fun for children to be able to say, oh, I know what that is. And then if you want to really plug a book, <laughs> what we do is we've got the, the plug from King Bidgood and Bathtub. And this is just a great way uh, we've been able to say to children, you, ha you don't know that plug, you haven't read the book, and then we bring the book out and give them a little bit of King Bidgood's in the bathtub. Go ahead. And of course, Tim Egan had to send us a pink refrigerator after his visit here, uh, which certainly represents the pink refrigerator. Uh, we've had Patrick McDonald at the store on, on several occasions, and one Christmas, right after he, uh, he created the book, The Gift of Nothing, he sent me an empty box, and <laughs> we have it up there on display. I was at the store when the front door opened, and in comes Peggy Rathman and her husband. They've got a ladder in their hand. They've got this big gorilla. And they said, we just couldn't think of a better place for this than Hickleby, so we decided we were just going to drive up, put it up, and take care of business. And that's exactly what they've done, and we've had this here ever since. In October of 1998, John Sheska and Lane Smith were autographing. And this might be surprising, but they were kind of being batty. And they started signing everything. And they signed the door here. Well, since then, we've had authors and illustrators sign all of our doors in the bathroom. Uh, the doors have gotten filled, so now they're starting to sign the inside of the bathroom walls. Uh, you'll notice we, this is where J.K. Rowling drew a picture. Originally, before, this was when her first book came out uh, with You Belong in Hickleby's. Um, and if you'll notice, there's another one that... Um, well, I think that this wonderful Jules Pfeiffer illustration, it's gotten very... It's in the midst of a crowd. Um, it's great fun. And here, come look at this one. How often are you going to be able to find an illustration of Pinhead by Clive Barker, right below a picture of, of Eric Carle's Caterpillar, which is near Mark Brown's Arthur, and a little bit of Thatcher Hurd, and a little bit of Patrick McDonald, and on and on. The combinations are great, and there's nothing more fun than coming back to uh, the back part of Hickleby's and seeing all of these signatures and illustrators that have been done over the year. Then, of course, <laughs> The famous Dumbledore, which we've had ever since Harry showed up. 